Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Right now, before you attack, does anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello everyone, my name is DJ. This is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel and I have a question for you. How many Orzov Commander decks is too many? Because I have before me Shadrick's Silver Quill, an Orzov Elder Dragon that's political, that deals with creature tokens and plus one plus one counters. It is so fun. I'm gonna have to build this too. Let's take a look at this Elder Dragon from the newest set, Strixhaven, and find out if this is a good deck for you to build. Shadrick Silver Quill is three white black for a 2-5 legendary Elder Dragon. It has flying and double strike. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may choose two. Each mode must target a different player. Target player creates a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. Target player draws a card and loses one life, and target player puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature they control. These are not small effects, and you get one of them the turn Shadrix comes into play. And Shadrix hits super hard too. Double Strike works really well, especially with that last ability of putting a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. And in fact, all of these modes are pretty good, which means uh, you are gonna have to give something away that's pretty strong to your opponent. There's always a political way to leverage this too. Players always want cards, so giving someone a card while you pump your whole team could be fine. Obviously that 2-1 Inkling is probably the le least impactful card on here, but it's interesting to note that it blocks Shadrick Silver Quill really well, so you can always stack up those Inklings on one opponent. But honestly, like, there's gonna be an opponent in the early game of Commander that just doesn't have a lot of creatures on the battlefield or has irrelevant creatures, maybe non-flying creatures. So you can just give them that plus one plus one anthem while you replenish your hand by drawing a card. Shadrix Silver Quill is awesome, and I think that it's gonna synergize really well with creature tokens and plus one plus one counters. And hit hard on its own, and give you that card advantage that you need in these color combinations. So let's start off by taking a look at some of these tokens, and just imagine your commander pumping all of these tokens with plus one plus one counters every single turn. Let's take a look. I think we expect these counters and tokens to exist really well in like a Simic deck, so I love seeing an Orzhov, and it has a ton of support. You can put in a bunch of enchantments like Court of Grace or Bitter Blossom. You can have instants or sorceries give you these tokens as well. Benevolent Offering I have in here because it's political too, and you can play that political game, but you could just as easily play a card like Lingering Souls. And then Grave Titan, all these different creatures that produce more creatures. I mean, you could do Geist Honored Monk or any of the other Hero of Bladehold in white, but I like Grave Titan creating those tokens. And then of course you have a lot of spells that put a massive tokens on the battlefield. They just released Blot Out the Sky, which can fill the sky with 2-1 flyers. Uh, Finale of Glory, uh, similar to Blot Out the Sky, has another effect. Yeah, making two twos is fine, but then when you create angels too, you know, or destroy all non-creature non-land permanents, it just becomes this crazy big over-the-top commander effect. And Secure the Waste is really nice because it's instant speed. That means that you can keep your mana open, cast it at instant speed, have a bunch of one ones, and then play your commander and make them all two twos. It the play patterns are very, very good. But also there's a bunch of cards that synergize not only with creating tokens, but creating plus one plus one counters. In white, I like Bosri's Lieutenant, giving you an insurance policy for all of your creatures that have plus one plus one counters on it. Super easy to give them plus one plus one. Felidar Retreat can create those tokens, but also pump your entire team with plus one plus one. Again, synergizes really well with those cards I mentioned before, like Secure the Waste. Uh, Twilight Drover, this works with plus one plus one counters and creates tokens too. Uh, whenever a creature token leaves the battlefield, you're gonna have a lot of those by the way, put a plus one plus one counter on Twilight Drover, and then you can activate Twilight Drover right by removing a plus one plus one counter from it to put two white spirit creature tokens with flying on the battlefield. So you can create these engines of creating tokens, pumping them up, you know, getting rid of them, creating more tokens. And that's just in white too. If we go over to colorless, Myriad Construct and Hangerback Walker. Uh, Hangerback Walker works great because you can just keep putting counters on it and then they turn into one ones. And then if you put counters on those one ones, it gets out of control. 
Myriad Construct is a really fun one that I think that you should take a look at because so many people have crazy mana bases in Commander. You can just play this gigantic construct that needs to be answered. It's huge. And every plus one plus one counter that gets on Myriad Construct turns into a construct a little bit later down the game. Of course, Black synergizes with these tokens and counters too. Newscraft Mob will create a 2-2 every single turn. And with your commander and all these other effects, you can keep stacking plus one plus one counters on the Newscraft Mob so it never dies. Alenda the Dusk Rose also has a similar effect. Whenever creatures die, Alenda gets bigger. And of course, you can get Alenda bigger with your own plus one plus one counter synergies. But then when it dies, you populate the board with an army of lifelinking vampires that you can easily get bigger. One of my favorite things to do with tokens, though, is to just upgrade them into angels with Divine Visitation. <laughs> just think about all of these different effects, but angels instead of inklings, angels instead of soldiers, uh, angels instead of knights. It's so goofy. And then, of course, Ophiomancer goes really well with this because you create an angel every turn. I just want this combo in one of my decks. And so I'm happy to build this and put the Ophiomancer and Divine Visitation into this one. Just so good. All right. So we have a lot of tokens and I've already started dipping into plus one plus one counters, but there are a few more that we might want to pay attention to, particularly Cathar's Crusade, which goes crazy when you put a bunch of tokens on the battlefield. I mean, this is a commander staple. I don't need to shout out how great this card is. But I also like these other effects, McCase the Lunark, allowing you to put plus one plus one counters everywhere. And then when you put other plus one plus one counters, it kind of refreshes a McCase. Drana, Liberator of Malakir hits and pumps your team. Really great with your dragon. <laughs> really great with all of your inklings. Anything that has evasion, uh, Drana comes down early and pumps herself, which is really cool. And then Archangel of Thune. In this deck, we don't have a ton of lifelink. We definitely have a little bit of it. So Archangel of Thune operates really closely to another copy of Drana rather than how it works in other decks, which is insane. But we're gonna hit with Archangel of Thune and then be able to pump our entire team. Or there could be other life gain synergies as well. For example, if you want to power up your deck a little bit more, you can consider including Walking Ballista and Heliod Suncrowned. Walking Ballista is just a great form of removal because we can play it and pump the plus one plus one counters and pick off your opponent's little creatures. It's really solid. And then Heliod Sun Crowned can also distribute plus one plus one counters, so it's on theme, but we don't have a critical mass of lifelink, so it's not like we're gonna be triggering lifelink all over the place. Of course, Walking Ballista and Heliod Sun Crown can work together to go infinite. And so if you're looking for some infinite way to win the game somewhere in your deck, this could power up your deck a little bit more. I think I might go the more dirtily route when it comes to beating your opponent down. I think I'm gonna go with Thief of Blood. Thief of Blood is four black black for a 1-1 one, one flying vampire. As Thief of Blood enters the battlefield, remove all counters from all permanents. Thief of Blood enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each counter removed this way. Now this is very parasitic. You could play Thief of Blood and destroy your entire board. You could play Thief of Blood and someone clones it and then it just destroys your entire board. So there's definitely a lot of risk here. But I do like the play pattern of pumping your opponent's team and then Thief of Blooding all of those counters back again. I think that that's really fun. Distribute plus one plus one counters everywhere and play the political game to get them to attack each other and then Thief of Blood stealing everything back that you've given away. So I think that that's a fun thing that you'll want to pay attention to, even though it could destroy your own deck. <laughs> All right, so we have a lot of tokens. We have a lot of counters. Let's start using a lot of those tokens to our advantage. Skull Clamp on any of those 1-1s one or 2-1 Inklings could be very good. Drawing extra cards is great. And I also want to include Ambrose, Dean of Shadow. This is a similar Skull Clamp effect, but whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter and it dies, draw a card. We can play Ambrose and suddenly our whole board is inoculated from a board wiper removal because we'll just refill our hand like crazy. Uh, Shalai Dean of Radiance is on the other side, giving your creatures that enter the battlefield plus one plus one. That can make a big difference when you're playing big effects like that Secure the Waste. Of course, if we have a bunch of creatures lying around, God Eternal Bantu can also refill our hand, and also Ashnod's Altar can turn those tokens into, into mana advantage. 
I also like the synergy that we can have with cards like Sword of Truth and Justice, Yawgmoth, Grateful Apparition, because these can turn these little tokens into something bigger and more impressive. Sword of Truth and Justice can put a plus one plus one counter and proliferate. We will regularly have plus one plus one counters our on our entire team. So this could proliferate literally our entire team and swap around to any of our disposable tokens. Yawgmoth Ran Physician can do something similar. Sacrifice one of these disposable tokens and then we get to draw a card, but also we can proliferate growing our entire team. Yawgmoth really, really synergizes well with this entire strategy, which is another reason why I love this deck because Yawgmoth is so cool. Of course, if you wanna go deeper into this proliferate strategy, Great Flapparition can also grow your entire team. If you're using Proliferate, you can also proliferate things like Planeswalkers. Kaya the Inexorable is a removal spell, but also generates tokens, protects your board. Solid. Liliana Dreadhorde General, a removal spell. Whenever your opponents are sacrificing creatures, that means that you usually have creatures to absorb the sacrifice effect. You create a couple inklings on your side of the battlefield, pump up your opponent's side, and then bam, Liliana gets rid of their big relevant creatures, you're only getting rid of inklings or you know, disposable warriors or whatever. Uh, Liliana also has that insurance policy of when things die, you draw a card. Elspeth Sun's Champion, a board wipe, but again, creates those creature tokens that you can use, you can weaponize, you can skull clamp, you can grow. I really like the Planeswalkers here because they all make tokens, which is thematic and it's what your deck wants to do. And they're also all different forms of removal spells, which is what this deck needs anyways, to be well-rounded. So how does Shadrick's Silver Quill end up playing out as a commander deck? I really like the way that this deck plays out because the curve works surprisingly well. Of course, we have a full complement of mana rocks in here because this will need to get to up to big mana, but it also has like Legion's Landing and Bitter Blossom and Adorned Pouncer for that double strike or a Pheomancer, you know, or Brina the Demagogue, the new Orzhov bird warlock coming in there. And so really it can start off attacking quite well. And then if your board remains untouched, you can play your command pump up your board and then suddenly people are really worried about you. They're gonna need to board wipe. But then you also have that sticking power. You know, you have the Basri's Lieutenants or the um, Kaya's the Inexorable or Liliana Death Horde General that will make sure that you don't fall behind if you get a board wipe. Or you have those other card draw effects like the Skull Clamp and the Yawgmoths. You can always sort of draw into more action. And then as the game moves on, you're still playing to huge outs. You either have a win when it comes to your combo, but for the most part, you have big stuff like Cathar's Crusade, you know, with your <laughs> with your Secure the Wastes or your Blot Out the Sky or Finale of Glory. You know, you have your commander that lets you deal tons of damage as you smash in or give you card draw. So this deck really is efficient at every stage in the curve, but still has a very powerful late game and the card draw to get you there. It means that this deck is well balanced and thematic and feels great to play. Before we go, I want to thank Cool Stuff Inc. If you want to check out a bunch of commander deck lists, you can head on over to Cool Stuff Inc. slash HQ for their Commander HQ. Right now, you can see all of the Kaldheim deck lists that they put up, but they're going to be pumping up a bunch of different deck lists from Strixhaven, all of these Commander deck lists that you want to see from great people. So check out Commander HQ on CoolStuffInc.com. While you're there, if you buy any cards, use the coupon code JUMBO5 for 5% off your order. I also want to thank my patrons because they support me all the time. They keep the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel going. Thank you so much to my patrons and thank you for watching this video. I'm so excited for tons of Strixhaven content. Uh, this is really Commander Christmas for all of us, so hope to see you guys all the time for tons of content. All right, bye-bye.